Hello. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. Give just a minute for everyone to join. Welcome. Thank you all for joining me. Uh, my name is Alex Seville and I am a member of the training and support team here at Hawks. And today I'm going to go over what's new for fall 2020. So we'll also review a couple of the features released over the past year as well. So to give you an idea of the order and what we're going to be covering today, I'd like to share just a quick agenda for our meeting. Uh, first, I'm going to share with you a quick overview of our new instructor single sign-on dashboard. Uh, and then we'll take a look at some updates made to our instructor tools and resources, the student courseware, our instructor reporting, and wrap up with some LMS syncing updates. So, all right, let's jump right in. First, let's take a look at our new instructor single sign-on dashboard that we are so excited to have released for you all. Um, so to access this new site, you're going to go to teach.hawkslearning.com. For those of you that already have a Hawks student account at learn.hawkslearning.com, and that same email is recorded in at least one of your Hawks gradebooks, you can actually use those same credentials to go ahead and sign in. Um, if you are brand new to Hawks and or um, do not yet have a student courseware account, uh, you will simply select the create an instructor account button there in the middle of the screen um, as shown in that center screenshot. Um, to create your account, you'll then enter your name, school, email address, and create in a password as shown on the right. Um, you'll also have the option to add an additional, um, an optional cell phone number if you'd like and then at the bottom review the software license agreement and click submit. Um, at that point, you will receive a verification email uh, to finalize the process. And once you receive that, simply click the link in the email to sign in to your account. Once signed in, you'll be taken to your dashboard, um, which will be blank at first. So uh, you'll simply want to select add course there on the right hand side to add your first Hawks course. You will then be prompted to add your course in one of two ways. If you are a brand new Hawks user, um, you may have received a course invitation email uh, containing a course link code. I'm going to show you what that looks like here in just a moment. Um, but if you receive that email, simply copy and paste that code here um, at the top and select add course. If you are a returning user, you're going to want to select your school name at the bottom, enter your course ID and Hawks gradebook login information to add your course. Um, so as a reminder, this is not going to be the teach password that you just created when you created your account, um, but instead you'll use the password um, that you've previously used to access your Hawks gradebook directly. Um, so just a quick glimpse at where um, each of those pieces of information can be found. So here on the left, um, for our new users, this is an example of what that course invitation email looks like that I referenced. Um, the code is listed there in red, so you'll just copy and paste that over. Um, as a reminder, this is only needed for you this first time to add your course, um, and then it will no longer be needed. It's also not something that you need to share with students or anything like that. Um, for our returning users, um, if you need to look up your course ID, adding your school name will help narrow that list down for you, um, but it is included in your gradebook URL. So it's the unique portion at the end, just prior to the C, um, which is at the end of all of our gradebook URLs. Um, it's highlighted here in this example on the right. Um, and in this example, it's Hawks Combo. So just to give you kind of a point of reference of where you're finding this information. Um, so once you're signed in, um, you can add additional courses. Um, to your dashboard, um, like you see here. Uh, and then once you've added all of your courses, you will see each of them in a Hawks gradebook tile. Um, so in this example here, I've got seven courses added to my main instructor dashboard. Um, and then from there, you simply select an individual course tile to access that gradebook. All right, once you click on uh, your Hawks course, you will then see your gradebook as usual for my returning users. Um, but you will have a drop-down menu here in the top left 
Um, and this menu allows you to seamlessly navigate between your Hawks gradebooks. So here's a, a zoomed in version of what that um, drop down looks like since it's a little bit small in my prior screenshot. Um, but again, this allows you to switch between your gradebooks without signing in again. So from that main dashboard, this will give you access to um, each of the courses that you've added. All right, so let's go back just to that main dashboard. You'll notice um, the menu shown there at the top where it shows Hawks Teach, Instructor View, and then on the right-hand side, you have your buttons to take you back to the Instructor Dashboard or the Student Dashboard at all times. So that bar will stay consistent for you guys. Um, but if you click on the Student Dashboard, I'd like to show you what that's gonna look like. And again, no additional password will be needed. It will sign you in directly um, and open up your student account. So. For those of you that are returning users, you will see any courses listed on your student dashboard um, that you previously had already available here for you. Um, and if you're a brand new user, your instructor dashboard may be blank. Um, and so in that case, you'll simply need to select add course here in the top right to add your student courses. Um, and in doing so, you will copy and paste the access code provided to you by your Hawks training and support representative. Um, this only has to be done once when you're first setting up your account. And if you have not by chance received that yet, um, please feel free to contact us. We'd love to assist and get you that information. All right, so that is um, kind of my quick overview. We are gonna be doing um, hosting other sessions on Teach in more detail. Um, but if you have any questions, we will get to those at the end as well. But um, if you have, um, your representative would also love to touch base. Um, to address any more specific questions you may have. But let's jump right into some of our other updates to instructor tools and resources that you have. So earlier this summer, um, we increased uh, the flexibility that you have when you're managing your lesson. So for those of you that might be using our visible on dates, uh, those will now shift with your due dates if you're using our shift multiple due dates button. Um, so just to kind of help save you some clicks uh, for those of you that do take advantage of this optional feature. Um, also, as you're managing your lessons, you will notice an updated interface when accessing our curriculum manager. So both on the template page, which is what I'm showing here, you'll see this updated view, as well as on the edit curriculum page. Um, so for our return users, the options are all the same for you, um, just organized a bit better. And uh, you'll notice that the lesson names have been moved over to the left hand side for you, um, as well as some shading has been added to help distinguish between the rows a bit more easily and the save changes button is now highlighted in blue on the right hand side. Um, so uh, the same familiar options, just hopefully a touch easier to access and manage your course from. Additionally, when making adjustments to an individual lesson, so if you selected a lesson name from that prior screen that I showed, um, we now have an updated lesson builder um, within that to help manage the questions included in your students' assignments. Um, so you'll now notice that on the left hand side, the question bank is now sorted by objective. Additionally, with this new lesson builder tool, you will have the option to pull content from any chapter or lesson into your assignments. So you'll see there on the top left, um, we're viewing chapter one, lesson 1.3a in this example, um, but we could choose to select a previous lesson or a future lesson to pull content into this particular area if needed. Uh, there's also an easy search bar there at the top uh, where you can search by objectives by keyword to help narrow down the question bank to the specific topic that you're looking to address. And then lastly, course administrators also have the option now to change lesson names for the entire installation if needed. So this just allows for further customization at your school level if needed. Um, as always, updates made here to your question bank um, and assignment apply to both practice and certify by default. Um, and then also as a reminder within the settings wheel option there on the right hand side, uh, that is where you'll access our learn screen notes tool where you can customize the learn portion of our assignments. Um, so that tool just as a reminder um, does allow you to add, replace, or hide content from the learn portion, the learn portion of an assignment. Um, so in addition to improvements made in the lessons, uh, we've also added two new features here to um, web test for you. So first that I'd like to point out um, is the ability to enable show work. Uh, so this option is currently set at the question level 
uh, within an assignment as you're creating a web test. Um, and the screenshot shown here is how it displays for your students. So currently this is a beta release um, and it does provide students with a text box so that they can explain how they arrived at their answer. So the text box is not included in the answer evaluation currently, um, so your assignments will still automatically grade for you. Um, but as a reminder, you can uh, restrict those grades from being visible to students if needed so that you have the opportunity to review what they included in show work prior to releasing their final grade. So some options there if needed. Secondly, we've also added the ability for you to select uh, fractional point values for your questions as you're setting up your test. Uh, so you may now select any value between 0 0.01 and 99.9 .9 points uh, for each individual question. So just a couple extra options there. Um, so let's jump over to the student side. I'd like to highlight uh, a few of the updates that we have made for your students within the courseware specifically. So we recently released an added link for students to access the list of keyboard shortcuts that are available within the courseware. So uh, this link as shown in the screenshot here on the right hand side is available in both practice and certify. Um, for ease of access for your students, um, for really all students, but especially those of our users utilizing a screen reader, um, which use these more frequently. So um, we added that there for uh, a little bit easier access for your students. Um, we've also added the ability for students to enable a zoom pan feature on static graphs. Um, so this will appear as a button just above the above the graph uh, when it's available. So as shown here on the image in the left, it's just a a toggle button above the graph for students. Um, and when they enable this feature, it allows them to zoom in on the graph. So the axis markers will float so that they can always see where they're at, even if they've zoomed in fairly dramatically. Um, and this can currently be en enabled for any static Cartesian graphs. Um, and it works similarly to Google Maps. So you can zoom in and out by double clicking, mouse scrolling, and or using keyboard shortcuts um, when they have enabled this feature uh, by the student. So, um, we are working towards making this also available for dynamic graphs in the future, but currently this um, should show for your students automatically for any of the Cartesian graphs uh, that are static within the courseware. Um, and then the last thing I wanted to note on this is they can also right click to open up a context menu, which gives them the option to reset their zoom level um, or center the graph at their existing zoom level um, when they're using this feature. Additionally, um, for students when they're using Certify, uh, they now have the ability to review their previous Certify attempts. So they will now see this option shown here um, when returning to a previously attempted lesson. Um, and by default, they can review all prior attempts. So if needed, this is a customizable setting under your curriculum options um, as the instructor. So you can control this um, if needed. That's what's shown in the screenshot there at the top. So again, that's under the curriculum settings underneath assignments in your gradebook. Um, additionally, uh, within that area in edit curriculum, you now have the ability to enable a beta feature called um, adaptive practice. So we've been collecting anonymous practice performance data uh, on hundreds of thousands of students over the years. Um, and so what this has done is allowed us to develop an algorithm that presents questions to practice in the most impactful way to help prepare students for certify. So we've been piloting this uh, new kind of enhanced practice version uh, with a few schools over this past year and the initial data has shown improved student performance. So we're really excited to expand this out. Um, so the participating pilot schools um, that have been a part of this, uh, what it does is it gave the enhanced practice to half of their students in a blind pool um, and compared it to a control group. Uh, so using the traditional practice. Um, and we have seen students in doing so take 13.4% less time to complete certify while missing 10% fewer questions and overall attempting certify 5% fewer times. So we're really excited to expand out this sample size for anyone interested in participating. Um, this option is available uh, underneath your curriculum settings uh, if you'd like to participate in this beta pilot. Uh, so it's shown here where that option is within curriculum settings. All right, lastly, um, students can now also retake practice tests. So practice testing is something that's been um, a feature for quite some time for students that we receive tons of positive feedback on um, in how it supports our students, um, but now they can also create, um, I'm sorry, retake any previously created test um, that they've done. So this can be really helpful to provide insight to your students um, 
as they're reviewing, you know, their improvement while studying, how far they've come, and um, to helping identify any areas that they still need further review. All right. So I'd like to jump back now, back to the instructor side just for a moment um, and touch on a couple of the changes with our reporting. So um, over the last year, we did move our most commonly used reports up to the top of the list on your reports tab under an area called key reports. So I'm sure you've noticed that for any of our returning users. Um, but we've also made some improvements to a couple of these reports um, so far that I'd like to just highlight quickly. Um, in particular, our all student scores report and our detailed student grades report that I'd like to show you. Um, today. So on the All Student Scores report, um, it now has the option under View Settings. So you have a Show View Settings option um, just below your filters, um, where you can now include the last login information for your students on this page. So as you can see, when that option is selected, it adds an additional column there at the start of your um, table of information um, that you can view their last login. Um, we've also added graphical displays of the overall grade data for final grade. So you'll notice a new little modal icon in that column header. And selecting that icon opens up three different graphical options for you uh, that we're really excited about. So the first option is a bar chart, which shows the number of students in each of your grade letter categories. So again, the grade letter categories are set by default. Those are something that you can customize though under your grade settings options. Um, so feel free to adjust those if needed, but um, the first option shows you those number of students in each grade category. The second option, the pie chart, shows you the percentage of students in each of those categories. And then third, you also have the statistical analysis of that data showing your average and median scores as well as the standard deviation. So all of these graphs are printable. They're also exportable as data or images if needed um, and are reactive to size depending on the screen that you're um, screen size that you're using and also your selections. Um, so what that means is, for example, on the pie chart, um, you can actually select to remove groups of students from the data being evaluated. So for example, you might want to take out um, all of your students with an overall average of zero, so the students that probably never actually came to your class, and then see how the remaining students get distributed. Um, so you have a couple different options there as well. Um, and then also I mentioned on the detailed student grades report, so similar to curriculum, um, you'll notice a refreshed and updated interface here as well. Um, so with this update, we did also add the ability for you to click on an assignment name um, directly to access a student's assignment reviews for that assignment. So um, previously and currently, you can still access the assignment reviews by selecting the actions column for an individual student. Um, but you can also now just click directly on the assignment name to open that up just to save you a couple clicks. All right, so as we're kind of wrapping up, I'd like to touch on a couple of the updates to our LMS syncing capabilities. So we've um, made some exciting improvements here. So first we released our LTI sync compatibility integration tool, um, which means we are now compatible with up-to-date Moodle installations. So um, if this is something that your school is interested in, um, we would uh, love to help you get that set up. So please just reach out to your training and support specialist um, with your LMS administrator's contact information and we'd be happy to coordinate getting that installed for you. Um, so for those of you brand new to our sync tool, what this does allow you to do um, is provide students with a single sign-on access point um, so they get immediate access to the courseware um, without any additional login or account creation. Um, it does provide a temporary code automatically for brand new students or finds a previously purchased code um, for any of your returning students and automatically enrolls them in your section. Um, it also allows from the instructor side for you to sync grades over from Hawks to Moodle in this case. Um, we also have sync tools for uh, Blackboard, Canvas, and Brightspace D2L for our users. So I'd like to touch on those for just a moment. So for our Canvas, and D2L Brightspace users, we've added a few more features as well for you all. Um, so the first that I'd like to mention is the ability to create deep links within the LMS. So um, what those links will do is take your students directly to an individual assignment in Hawks. So of course, in that process, it's also signing them in um, and making sure they're enrolled in your section. Um, but instead of taking them just generically to their to-do list in Hawks, you can actually create specific deep links to go to individual assignments in Hawks to further customize your Canvas D2L or Brightspace course. 
Um, you now also, for those platforms, have the option to select to auto-sync grades daily to Canvas, D2L, or Brightspace by selecting the Schedule Sync tab within the tool. And then third, um, I'd like to comment the um, for these three platforms, Canvas, D2O, and Brightspace, the assignment due dates now also automatically carry over um, for your assignments when you are creating those new assignments with the sync tool and or when uh, grades are synced for that particular assignment. So if the due date gets changed at a later date, the next time a grade is synced for that assignment, it will update the due date um, at the section level for that assignment as well. All right, so that concludes um, the content that I wanted to cover for today. So at this time, I would be happy to answer any questions that may have come up. Um, give me just a moment. I'm going to pull up the question and answer portion in the chat and see um, what questions I might be able to share with you guys um, and answer together. If there are any that we run out of time and aren't able to answer as a group, then um, would be happy to follow up with you individually. So if for any reason I'm not able to touch on your questions, um, just know that we will follow up um, individually as well. So give me just one second. Um, and yes, so a couple people asked about um, getting this sent out. So we will be sending out a link to the recording um, as well as the presentation um, after our session today. So as well as information on all of our fall training webinars that we're hosting this month. Um, I do apologize if the screen was not um, large enough for you to see for any of the screenshots. If there's anything in particular that you had trouble seeing, please just let me know and I'd be happy to, to address either individually or um, share a little bit larger if possible. Um, let me see if there were any other questions that we can address. All right, so a couple, um, we had a question come in about the deep linking in regards to Canvas and how to turn that on. So on the assignments tab in the sync tool, there will be a checkbox at the very top of the page. And let me see if my screenshot includes this for you guys. Give me just one second. Um, so here, so it's very small in my screenshot. I do apologize here on the left-hand side, this part that's highlighted at the top, there is a checkbox that um, indicates that you would like a deep link to be created. And so that will be created for any individual assignment that you map over. So anything that's in a light green row. Um, so for a lesson, it takes students directly to the learn practice certified page. For a test, it takes them to the start test initial launch page. Um, and for an other assignment, since those are not within our system, it does take them to the main page for that. Um, but Primarily, these would be intended for, of course, lessons and web tests. So whether that be tests or quizzes, so it will take them to those initial pages. But as long as that checkbox is selected when you create the assignment um, for the very first time, then the links will be included. Um, and then they actually persist as long as it is still assigned. So you can actually copy it from shell to shell in Canvas or D2L and those links will remain usable as long as they are linked and assigned to at least one section at all times. So you can reuse them um, if you by chance say use the sync tool to create the, sec the column so that you get the deep link and then rename it and you may want to just reuse that in your other Canvas sections you can do that as well but um, it is also checked by default. So if you are um, you know, for the fall mapping any of those individual assignments, the deep link will be included in that assignment as it gets created. Um, we've got a few more minutes. Let me see what other questions we may have. Yes, yeah, so the show work available, we had a question about the show work and where it's available. So when you are creating a web test, so using our web test builder to create a test, a quiz, a practice assignment, um, in the question bank as you are adding questions to your assignment, there will be a button that just says show work. Uh, and so you'll say enable show work. And so when you select that, you can select it for any individual question that you would like to um, have that available to your students for. So if you are teaching multiple courses, so in regards to the Teach platform, um, 
you will need to add a course tile for any individual um, separate title that you are using with Hawks. So for example, if you are using our introductory and intermediate algebra for a math 99 level course, you would want to add it. If you're also using our college algebra title for say an 1105 and an 1110, or maybe a combination of courses, um, then you would want to add that single Hawks title as a course tile once. Um, so even if you're using maybe a combination product for a couple different classes, you just need to add that access point once for yourself and um, to access that course. Let's see, we've got a couple extra minutes. So the practice test option for students um, is pulls from the curriculum used in the lessons. Uh, so I do believe if you have question builder questions in those assigned in your lessons that it would pull from that question bank. Um, the uh, person that asked that we can follow up specifically um, with you uh, with more details if you'd like, but for the practice test for students, it does pull from the curriculum being used in your course. So um, it should pull from that specific content, not just our full question bank. Um, so we had another question about um, the Teach platform and single sign-on and how it's different from our previous access points. Um, so the main benefit of the new Teach, one of the main benefits of our new Teach platform is so that you have one password to access all of your Hawks gradebooks and the student courseware. So even if you're just teaching one course with Hawks, um, I still would encourage you to take advantage of this new um, platform because it will also allow you to access the student side without needing to sign in separately. And if by chance you add another course in the future, then you're already ready to um, be able to access it from that same location. Um, but uh, it also adds the ability for you to reset your password at any time if you need to. So there are just a couple kind of nuanced things, but really being able to add, I believe, in my opinion, sign into the student side without an additional login um, can really be um, beneficial. So um, I would definitely encourage each of you to take advantage of the new site and certainly your training and support representative would love to help you individually if you'd like to help get that set up. Um, but that's the main difference is only having one password um, as well as an easier to remember location. So previously all of our gradebooks had very unique um, URLs for security reasons. Um, in the past, the way things were set up, that was um, our best approach. Uh, but this also allows us to have a unified platform where teach.hawkslearning is all you have to remember and you can get to all of your resources um, from within our platform from that one location. All right, so that is going to bring us up just to our time um, today. And so if I, unfortunately, if I did not get to your question, um, we will certainly follow up with you individually. Some of the questions I think would be best um, addressed one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. So uh, we'll be sure to do that. Um, we, one last question that I just saw come through um, in terms of student training videos, um, we do have videos regarding how to use our, the courseware individually. So both how to set up an account if you are not using single sign-on, but then a separate video on how to use the courseware. So for any of our single sign-on users, I would recommend that second video, um, which uh, you can find on our website for students how to use the courseware because LMS platforms can vary so greatly in where single sign-on links are located and even you know, what Brightspace looks like for each individual school. We do not currently have videos um, posted on our site for students from a single sign-on perspective. However, your training and support specialist would love to work with you to help put something together um, on a one-on-one -on -one basis, if that would be helpful for your students. So um, if we can be of any assistance in creating a custom video for you, um, we'd want to work together to, so that it shows exactly what your school's installation of say D2L or Brightspace looks like um, 
and then where those single sign-on links are located for your students, since that can vary so greatly. Unfortunately, we don't have a kind of generic video because there's not really a way to do that, but um, we would love to do an individual one um, if that would be helpful. So thank you all so very much for your time today. Um, I greatly appreciate it. Um, as I mentioned before, we are going to send out a recording of this discussion. Um, and as always, if you have any additional questions, please reach out to us at training at hawkslearning.com. Our phone number and chat links are also on the screen for you um, or contact your training and support representative directly. We would love to help um, both discuss any of these questions, these features further or um, discuss how they might be utilized in your courses individually. Um, and as a reminder, we are always available for one on one or group training sessions um, as needed for you and your colleagues. So please reach out to us. We'd love to connect. Um, and I want to thank you all again and hope you have a great day.